Hello YouTube, tutorial time once again. This is Mr. Ozonator and I'm going to do a tutorial on how to remove decals or some sort of images on a car. Usually a car, I'm sure you could apply this to many other things once you learn the technique. It's really simple and expect a few more maybe car based tutorials in the future and maybe even a um, virtual car speed art as well. So I got this requested on my last speed art called Monster Fiesta. If you haven't seen that, be sure to go check it out. And basically in the speed art, I, re I removed pretty much all of these um, decals on the car. And it's not very hard to do. So let's start with this Ford one over here. Basically what you want to do is use selections a lot because cars, they have obviously natural grooves and natural sections. Here you can see the door separator. Um, where the edge of the door is and you don't want to cover that up because then that will make the car look very um, unrealistic or see without a door so we're going to use selections a lot make sure you've got a backup copy of the background layer which I've already done and then I'm just going to get a selection tool such as the polygon or lasso tool third tool down if you can't see it it's just there and then we are going to make a selection of the first area keeping on the left side of this door divide so once you've made that selection, I'm going to try and go around this bit of orange there. Once you've made that selection, go up a bit and back up to the top. And make sure you've got an area on the left where you can kind of get some area to copy over kind of thing. So there's many different techniques and ways to do this. I'm going to show you a few of them. There's smudging, there's filling, there's brushing and there is copy and pasting. I'm not sure if I'll show you the copy and paste one but I'll definitely show you the other three. So we're going to start with smudging. So with the background backup layer selected we're going to grab our smudge tool and with a reasonably high strength here I've got 84 and with a hard round brush reasonably big size we're going to smudge to the right. That's why I said leave our area to the left of the decal so you've got something to kind of use. Then we're just going to smudge to the right making sure that we keep Kind of make lots of separate smudges otherwise the colors will not flow now we come to a problem here because the colors kind of drastically change and we don't really want to muck that up so we're just going to make a new selection and select the top half first so we're just going to select along there and up and across and then using the smudge tool smudge to get rid of that part of the decal and then we're going to select the bottom half this is just so we don't kind of cross over that border and make it look bad. So again, keeping that area to the left which we can use, just going to smudge that along roughly. I'm only doing this kind of roughly just to show you how to do it. And then if there's any areas afterwards, you can just make the smudge tool a bit smaller. As you can see here, just want to even this out a bit here. And there we go. We have just removed the left side of this decal. So for the right, that was the smudge technique. As you can see, it works pretty well. Um, can be a bit uneven though if you're not a steady kind of smudger in the straight lines can be a bit wobbly and uneven though if you're not careful so next is the brush method if I just undo that by getting rid of this there so that was the smudge method just smudging kind of leaving an area to the side and then smudging across this is the this is the brush method so this is using not obviously not using smudges so you don't actually have to make a backup do the same again, just make selections of each different section. I'm going to use the top half first. And then I'm going to use the color picker tool, which is the sixth tool down. And then starting at the top, we're going to get the darkest color. Because this is gradient from dark to light, we're going to get the darkest color first. And then using the soft round brush, paint brush, not too big. We're just going to paint across here as if we're kind of smudging, but doing the painting instead. So then we're going to grab the next kind of lighter colour and brush that across cross, cross, <laughs> cross, and then get another light colour so basically all I'm doing is kind of mimicking smudging and kind of gradient but with the paintbrush if you want that bit more control over it deselect that and as you can see this is one of the problems with brushing if you don't take your time and kind of build up the layers um, the different colours then it can seem a bit noticeable not very gradual change so to kind of try and fix that you can get the blur tool it doesn't work all that well though and then you can go in and blur these areas 
to kind of get rid of that heart those harsh lines as you can see that looks pretty good remove the decal so success with that obviously don't do the bottom bit I haven't done that yet but you can do that so that was the smudge method and the brush method I think the smudge method is better but obviously you have to have a steady hand and make sure you don't screw it up make sure you do backups and stuff just to be sure now the gradient method is the third method I'm going to show you this is also good probably the paintbrush method is one of the worst um, but obviously it can have areas where it's best so for the gradient method we're going to use new layers as before not using the background layers completely new layers make selections like before top half first around the left side of this door separate a bit and then we're going to check get two colors dark color from the top switch the colors around and then get a light color for the bottom and this is going to be the basis for our gradient we're going to go over to the paintbrush not the paintbrush the paint bucket and select gradient tool make sure it's the one that we have the colors picked for make sure all of this is kind of default and then we're going to go from i can never remember which one it is top to bottom no nope. bottom to top <laughs> does it just depends which way around that colors you have kind of keeping the same um kind of angles as the car and then filling that and deselecting it as you can see that that kind of gives the most even um color change but in real life kind of photos wise color changes aren't usually that kind of perfect and kind of shadows and light areas aren't usually that perfect looking so gradient the gradient um method isn't all that useful all the time but you can go in and use the smudge tool maybe just to even out this left side what have i done using the burn tool um where is it there we go just to even out this left side if you want um or you could use the blur tool that obviously works just as good so that was the gradient method it gives a nice clean look which can be suitable for some areas but maybe not this area because the original photo was a bit kind of grainy and not the best quality so we don't want to kind of overdo it and make it look less realistic than it originally was so the fourth and final method is the copy paste method this is probably the easiest maybe um, and it can probably get the best results because we're using um, a section of the car as a kind of reference but it's not a can't be applied to all areas because some hard shapes and um, difficult shapes can't be used with this method so you on the background um, layer we're going to make a selection to the left of this logo and make sure we're not selecting any of the logo we're just going to select an area which we can then copy and paste we're going to go control command c and v and then it's pasted onto a new layer and then we're just going to move this across like so and then we can, if we want, we can command or control T that and transform it and stretch it over. But that usually distorts the image a bit. It's not too bad in this case. Um, yeah, a bit blurry. So we, instead of doing that, we could just keep pasting it and then just keep moving it across. This is the kind of the method that I used to do a lot when I used to do virtual cars. And it works pretty well. But obviously, as I said before, not in all situations. So just paste in the last one in there somewhere. There we go. And then just to make sure I've got that door a bit right, I'm just going to hide that and then select the right side, which I'm going to delete. And obviously later I can work on getting rid of the right side of the Ford logo. So as you can see, the copy paste, copy -paste method it's pretty good but if there's any kind of um, grainy bits or uneven bits in the bit you copied then obviously that's going to be replicated in the other sections which you use so those are the four basic easy methods to remove decals or any kind of it's basic kind of photo manipulation really any photos which you have something in which you want to get rid of um, obviously in Photoshop CS5 there's content aware fill which um, can be useful but it's probably always better to do it manually um, unless you're kind of lazy and these things aren't even hard so you might as well do it this way um, just another example of another one you can do like another decal using the, the gradient method kind of 
the best way to kind of make them work is to be able to identify where each method would look, would be good. In that case, I probably would have used maybe the smudge method or, oh yeah, probably the smudge method just because there's some grainy bits. So I couldn't really do the copy paste very well and the grainy bits would have stood out from the gradient method because the gradient doesn't have any grainy, bit, grainy bits. But in this case, I think I'm going to use the gradient method because as you see, there's quite a light color and really dark color. And just to get a nice smooth gradient between those two colors, we can do with the gradient. So I'm going to create a new layer, grab these two colors, the light one and the dark one, and then draw the gradient out. Always do it the wrong way. Like so. Deselect it and that's pretty much removed. Might be a bit too dark though. Let me just... So if you want obviously the gradient to go not all the way, you just pull it halfway or so. Wrong way. So pull it... No, wrong. So start in the middle halfway. Because as you can see it kind of goes black very early. So I'm going to pull it about there. Deselect it and as you can see that's pretty much removed the decal. If you want you can go and blur the edges or smudge the edges. If you want make sure not to uncover any of the decal afterwards. And as you can see that's pretty much removed. Might be a bit too light so you could go in and make that a bit darker or if you want you can I'm pretty sure there's a sharpen tool which could give it a bit more of a grainy look. That will kind of fit in with the rest of the image. And so there you go. Obviously these can be applied to these. this white one down here. It's a really easy one. It's probably just one colour. This one would be best for the paintbrush method. So I'm just going to make a selection around it. Selections. I basically just use selections just so you don't go over any of the lines. Which is really important when using cars. But obviously you don't have to use selections if you don't want to. So I'm, I just grabbed that colour. Just going to paint over it. And that's pretty much it. Just one step. Blur the edges a bit and you just removed, I just removed that decal like it was never there and as I said it can be applied to any of these, the green one if you go watch the speed art you see me do this um, you might be able to see it, it's probably a bit fast but yeah, so that's an easy way to remove decals or it can be applied to any other photos hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, catch you later, thank you for watching